Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to I cooked 100 years of burgers from Google Foods. And I mean, 100 years of burgers. I don't know how long burgers have actually been around. I assume longer than 100 years, but I'm just reading the description. I went. I wanted to go back 100 years and see what burgers were like from the 1900s to the 2000s. I cooked them all. We also rated them to see which were the best. I don't know where they got this information from. But burgers are probably the top three creations, food creations in the world for sure. Incredible confectionery. But um, how they were before and how these thought of evolved, I don't know. I mean, I can't see how they've changed much. It's just bread and a burger. But um, we're going to see. Hopefully going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon. We can see reactions that I can't post to YouTube. And let's just check this out and see how burgers have evolved over the 100 years they've been in existence for this video obviously i don't know when burgers were actually made but let's just say they're 100 years old for this context on today's video i am cooking 100 years of burgers and we're going to be rating them from 1 to 10 so you know which ones we like best and we're starting off with this one that looks sad is that a burger welcome to the 1910s in this decade the story goes like this at this time they served hamburger steaks with a fork and a knife then one person Damn. showed up in a hurry. So they said, let me put on some toast for you. And that is how one of the very first burgers were created in Louis' <laughs> lunch, oh, where they still serve the original burger today. Now the interesting thing is how it was cooked. It was cooked in a vertical broiler that looked something like this. At this time, burgers cost 10 cents. Now obviously I don't have one of these. So I try to improvise as much as possible. These are cooling racks. I'm hoping they're gonna work just fine. Now for the patty, I chose 80-20. And as you can see, a nice thick one. So after laying down my burger on the cooling rack, I seasoned the patty with a good amount of salt and pepper. Then I immediately put one right on top. As now I got my sears all and started to broil the beef. Surprisingly, it worked extremely well. And I can uh -huh. only imagine the smell that came out of this in the restaurant. Now they were not crazy because they also toasted their buns. And as far as I know, the very first burger had nothing, just bread and beef. It doesn't get any simpler than that. However, with our research nowadays, they make it like this. And that had a little bit of cheese bread, followed by the broiled beef, a thin slice of onions, and one of tomato. Close that all up, and this is one of the first burgers created. But don't forget the original, with nothing. Now how did it taste? Well, let's try them and rate it. Looks very different than the burgers we know today. There's no cheese, but at least there's no vegetables either. <laughs> <laughs> it is basically meat Fair and enough. sandwich bread. Let's see how it tastes. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. I don't care what anybody says. That's delicious. Look, it's really good, but it feels wrong that it's in toast. <laughs> yes. I'm okay with it being in toast, but I just feel like it needs some cheese. It needs some oh, sauce. Man. Funny you said that because nowadays they actually make it like this, sir, and it has cheese for you. Oh, man. But that's not how it started. That's where we are right now. And this burger, everybody, still being served today. Cheers, everybody. Oh, my God, it's such a mess. Cheers. Mmm. Oh. That's so much better with the cheese and the wow. tomato and the onions. Talking about that, there was a huge upgrade from this decade to the next. Check it out. In the 1920s, White Castle was born. The price started at only 5 cents. That's oh about 70 cents days. today. They are known to have... Oh, Jesus, that was cheap. Bloody hell. ...invented the slider and the concept of carrying out. Now, the way they made their sliders are quite unique. First thing Sliders. to do is to grab some beef. Then to make them at home, you want to lay down some parchment paper and immediately spread a good amount of beef. We want to get them super flat. So for that, I put another parchment paper right on top and pressed it with another sheet. Now I laid it down on a cutting board and using the back of my <laughs> knife, I went hell? ahead and scored the beef. This will allow me to break them once they get frozen. Now I remove the parchment paper. And if you're following the original recipes, you must poke five holes. You can do it just by using what? a chopstick. Once they were all done, into the freezer it goes to Freezer? So they're freezing it now, okay. To firm up. After about one hour, I took it out and look. We got our beef ready to be cooked. But there's one more thing that we gotta do, and that is to use the onions. They don't use fresh onions on White Castle. They actually use this, dehydrated one. So we gotta bring them back to life. To do that, you just gotta soak them in water. And funny enough, they still use this method today. In okay. case you are wondering what kind of buns I'm using, these are Hawaiian sliders. They're gonna work perfectly for this recipe. So to cook them outside, I went. I heat up the cast iron griddle and placed all of the onions in there together with the water. Because instead of getting a nice crust on our meat, we're gonna steam it. Yep, 
right on top of the onions. And funny enough, the bread goes right on top of the beef. What? That's the way they still do it today. You see, the idea is that the steam will also heat up the buns. I'm not gonna lie though, it feels weird putting the bread on top of the beef. Because once it's fully cooked, the next thing is to assemble. First, on one side of the bun, they add a little bit of mustard. Next, they scoop the onion and the beef. As now, there's left to do is to add some cheese, followed by pickles, and top it off. I'm not sure about this one. Uh, I thought the last one was gonna just be the worst for sure, but this one might take the, the crown. With that mustard bun. Now this is the White Castle slider. In the 1920s, this was extremely popular and costing only five cents, it was a hit. The 1920s burger, White uh -huh. Castle slider. Well, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I saw it being cooked and uh, I'm not very excited, let's say that. You don't like the steaming action on the raw meat, bro. There's no crust. This thing is gray and sad, bro. <laughs> this looks like a boiled burger. White Castle sounds like we're in the dungeon eating the burger there you go one nickel everybody doesn't get any better than that let's give it a try tell me cheers everybody cheers it's so soft it's not a good sauce <laughs> <laughs> it's super tender that's why the pickle is there to give you a little crunch we definitely have way better burgers nowadays but at the start 1920s this is pretty good tell you one thing it's pretty good it's time to go on to the next decade in the 1930s, times were tough. It was the Great Depression. But there's one burger that really stands out from that decade. Oh, that the onion burger. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love onion in a burger, but it's just not a bit too much. <laughs> would be the Oklahoma Fried Burger. Invented by Ross Davids to keep burgers prices low, he decided to press a handful of onions into his patties to extend the beef supply. Now to make this burger, there's a very interesting technique and here's how. First, we go ahead and get the griddle nice and hot. Now place the beef right on top, smash it down a little bit, and as it's cooking, add a good amount of onions. Then of course, smash it down even more. Now this burger doesn't get any easier than that to make, as after flipping it so that the onions can cook, you wanna go ahead and toast the buns. Now in its most basic form, this is it. We got bread, beef, and onion. I get the idea behind it, like he explained, and I fully understand it. I love onion in burgers, like I said, but... <laughs> This is an onion burger. This isn't a burger. This is an this is a burger with an with onions, really. It's so much. Onions. It is simple. It will feed hungry people. And she's fair. Here it doesn't look that mad. This area doesn't look as much, to be honest. It might go hard. It might be really nice, to be fair. And at the same time, is it delicious? Well, let's find out. The Great Depression burgers from the 1930s, also known as the Oklahoma Fried Onion Burgers. Are you guys ready to try this? It smells Ooh. great. Let's try it, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, that's probably a lot good. of onion. That's too much onion. <laughs> okay, I was thinking it probably is a bit too much onion. <laughs> Wow. That's definitely too much onion. Just the onion, the patty on the bun is just way too simple for me. What do you think, Leo? The onions have such an overpowering sweetness that that's what you get mainly, not a lot of beef. Yeah, yeah. But, but Leo, come on, bro. It makes sense at the time, I mean. They didn't have the money, bro. Chill out. Times are tough. I get it. I get it. When times are tough, you got to feed a lot of people. Still, this is a delicious burger. Oh, this is Enough. the last one. Next decade. In the Last 1940s, right things were about to change forever. That's when McDonald's was invented. Originally a barbecue restaurant, in the late 40s what? they switched to selling McDonald's used to be a barbecue restaurant. What the hell? It's only burgers, fries, drinks, milkshakes, and pies. Also, McDonald's cheeseburger only cost 19 cents. And the way it was made was slightly different than today. You see, at the time, they used a nice, thicker patty, kind of like this one. And it was seasoned with salt and pepper. The crust was not strongly pronounced, but they made sure to toast the buns. And the original cheeseburger had ketchup on the top bun, followed by some onions, and a slice of cheese, followed by the meat. Yep, it was assembled upside down. Fair and there enough. we have it, the original cheeseburger from the 1940s. They don't look like this nowadays, because it had more meat than today. My hopes is that it's gonna be better. 1940s, the birth of McDonald's, gentlemen. After school, me and Leo used to go straight to McDonald's and grab some cheeseburgers, because they used to be 67 cents. Each. Not anymore. Not anymore. Are you guys ready to try this burger? Let's see, please dig in, gentlemen. Do it. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. That's a classic. That's a cheeseburger right there, everybody. Wow. That's way better than McDonald's. Especially from the last burger that we had that was more onion than burger. This is nice, bold, beefy, delicious. Cheese, <laughs> toppings, everything just blends together beautifully. Jeez. Things were getting a little bit better at, during this time, so they were able to put the cheese in and not charge an arm and a leg for it. 
But that onion burger, don't knock that one, everybody. It's delicious. With that being said, <laughs> let's jump on to the 1950s. In the 50s, burgers started changing. It was when the Whopper was invented, the Jack in the Box, Water Burger, Sonic, and the Juicy Lucy. Yep, things started getting really good on that decade. Juicy also, Lucy. the category we know and love was created. But it didn't look like this. This is actually what it looked like. Now, there's a very interesting burger that was invented in the 50s. Oh. And that would be this one. It's called the Steam Burger. For oh, there's a lot of cheese. First up, we gotta get a big patty. And just like the Chunky. name says, we gotta steam this meat. I place my patty into the steamer, followed by some white chatter. Cover it up and let the whole thing steam. Now, instead of using a regular burger bun, they use Kaiser Roll. This is quite different than normal buns and the taste is very light but also very delicious and the best part was that it was toasted with butter the 50s knew what they were doing so to assemble it's pretty simple i laid down a slice of raw onion followed by some mayo ketchup and mustard then the tomato goes right on top we can't forget about the lettuce and pickles as now it was time for the beef and we cannot forget one thing the cheese God to damn. be specific the steamed white cheddar now that is a burger oh, the big question taste. is how does it taste and here we have the 1950s burger damn that was good <laughs> it does yeah i saw you making this and you steamed it so i'm not excited wow this guy is such a hater steaming is okay everybody for this steam looks a bit it looks a bit crunchier than not crunchy it looks a bit like crispier than the other one that was steamed that other steamed one just looked very wet a burger i guess right let me know in the comments down below enough talking let's give it a try cheers everybody cheers yo it's a mess yeah it's a mess because it's big it's very messy it's a mess but it is a very juicy burger i have to say very juicy extremely flavorful even though i'm still missing the crust but i cannot say anything bad about him you know what it's actually not bad <laughs> it's it's like you say the only thing you're really missing is a good crust mm -hmm. this is, i think this is ranked the highest so far but with that being said let's jump on to the 1960s but i don't remember the how did they rank the other one but the onion burger, don't knock that one, everybody. It's delicious. With that being said, let's jump on to the 1950s. Oh, they didn't, they didn't star right yet. During this time, so they were able to put the cheese in and not charge an arm and a leg for it. But the onion burger... They didn't, damn. In 60s. In the 1960s, Chick-fil-A was founded, and so was Red Robins. At this point in time, hamburgers went from being an American classic to slowly spreading throughout the world. However, there's one iconic burger that stand out from the rest, and we're talking about the Big Mac. And funny enough, it was created okay. because of a competition. McDonald's wanted to compete with the big boy hamburger, but instead they created one of the most popular burgers in history. And this is what makes it so famous, the Big sauce. Mac sauce. To make it, there are several different- Controversial opinion, I've said this before, I'm not the biggest fan of sauces. I like barbecue sauce. And that is more or less it. I like sort of like um, sweet chili and stuff, but I don't. you're not gonna have that in a burger, are you? I'm going to shut my window quickly. Someone started drilling. Um, like, I like certain dipping sauces, but when it comes to, like, burgers, I'll either, and this is weird, I'll either have just barbecue sauce. Actually, I'll always just have barbecue sauce, to be fair. Or, like, from McDonald's, whenever I, like, order a quarter pounder or whatever, I'll order it without sauce, and I'll just dip the burger in barbecue sauce. I don't know what's happened to my taste buds. I just only really, like barbecue sauce when it comes to burgers it's very strange i used to like ketchup i used to like mayo and i just sort of grew out of it i don't know why <laughs> i think I, I think i used to watch my brother mix mayonnaise and tomato ketchup together and that used to make me feel so sick and then from that i've just been scarred which is wild to think <laughs> i don't know why this happened but i've never actually had big mac sauce i should have had it once I had it once the first time i had big macs didn't like it I mean, I was a kid, so I don't know how it would taste now. If I tried it now, I'd probably love it, but yeah. <laughs> My life story there. Versions. The one I like the most is this one. Into a bowl, I threw in some mayo, followed by ketchup, mustard, sweet onions, onion powder, grated garlic, butter pickles, white vinegar, salt, and pepper. Mix everything well, and the Big Mac sauce is done. This was also one it's of like the very first burgers to use three buns. And at first, Big Mac patties were nice and thick. So we're gonna try to do the original version. I seasoned them with salt and pepper. Got a nice crust and they were ready. 
After toasting up the buns, it was time for the assembly. We got the bottom bun, followed by a good amount of Big Mac sauce, white onions, shredded lettuce, two pickles, that beautiful burger patty we just cooked, American cheese, middle bun, and repeat the process once again. To finish it off, just top it off with the top bun. Now this is the original Big Mac. I wish that it still looked like this on McDonald's. That looks sensational. This guy, I mean, I think I've heard the channel before and I know he's a really good chef, but god damn. Does it taste as good as it looks? Well, let's find out. Here we are on the 1960s, the Big Mac, gentlemen, huh? I've eaten uh, a little bit too many of these in my life. Uh, I had quite a few as well, everybody. I Big Mac is a classic. Them. These burgers don't look authentic. They're too good. <laughs> McDonald's wish their patties were this big, right? I've never seen a McDonald's patty this thick. I'm not gonna lie, Google, I thought you went to McDonald's and you actually just bought a Big Mac. I, no, but I, now after no. seeing this, yo, this is no joke. Let's give it a try, everybody. Cheers. 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 Oh man, mm. that tastes like a Big Mac. That tastes like a Big Mac. That mm. sauce is so good. The sauce is right on the money, right? Fresh Big Mac sauce is crazy. And it's so juicy, like you just squeeze it, you see the juices. Is it fair to say that it's like the golden era of burgers right here? Pretty much because it's still good today. True. Eight. That is delicious. And now Eight we're going to go and jump into the 1970s. Ooh, groovy. In the 1970s, the burger cost about 69 cents. And the newly invented grill at... Wait. How much? In the 1970s, the burger... Which equals $7.24 today. What is this comparison in comparison to? That sounds insanely expensive. Cost about 69 cents. And the newly invented grill at that time was the Big Green Egg. Another historical burger chain was created, Wendy's. And they shocked the world with unique square patties. They really wanted okay. to stand out from the rest. That's one of the reasons they kept saying fresh never frozen. This is a good thing because fresh meat is always better. Now to cook up the original Wendy's burgers is pretty simple. We got a nice hot griddle and throw in the patty. Of course, don't forget to toast the buns. For the assembly, they started with the top bun. First, a good amount of ketchup followed by mayo. Then on the bottom bun goes one slice of American cheese, followed by that hot square patty, followed by lettuce, a slice of tomato, onions, and pickles. Then top it off with the top bun. Now this is Wendy's original burger. This fresh cheese on the bottom as well. Damn. Never Frozen really makes a big deal? Well, let's find out. And here we have the fresh Never Frozen. What's that? Groovy era. Come on, guys. Uh, the 70s. <laughs> oh, you got to hit that. This guy, <laughs> man. <laughs> so this is the Wendy's original burger. I hope I did its justice. Leo, go ahead and grab it. Damn, there's no crust on this. No crust because that's the original and the right way to do it. So hopefully it's going to taste fantastic. Enough talking. Let's give it a try. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. There's something to be said about fresh, never frozen. This might be one of my favorite burgers on this list so far. This is damn good. It's so funny, it got like the little square patty too. It is a Wendy's burger, you know what it tastes like. It is delicious, it's still square today, but let's jump into the 1980s. My era, when I was born. I was literally okay. salivating, flipping out. I was daydreaming and salivating. <laughs> Now we are in the 80s, and burger prices were on the rise. At this time, another huge burger joint was opened, created by a father and his four sons. These five guys wanted to choose quality five and guys. flavor over profits. And I'm talking Come about on. five guys. And I'm going to be making their all the way burger. I mean, take- I love a five guys burger. I do love a five guys burger, man. The thing is, though, it's not like having a, McDon a McDonald's one. Like, when you have a five guys, you've got to, like... Like, I couldn't have a five. I mean, I say it's not like McDonald's. Obviously, it's better quality. But with five guys, it's very, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, there's a lot of flavor. You can't have a five guys every every other day. I mean, I've not had a five guys for a long time. But when I have them, it's like, I'm really excited to have it. When I have McDonald's burgers, it's just sort of like, okay, it's another McDonald's burger. Five guys is different, man. You have that and you're happy, man. Okay, look at this burger. It For is me. incredible. They do something most burger joints don't do. Let me explain. That one has sauteed onions and mushrooms. Just cook them up like you normally would and no big deal. But I want you to notice one thing. There's no seasoning on them at all. And the same goes oh. for the burger patties. The interesting thing is that if you want seasoning on your burger, you gotta ask for it in Five Guys. And really? I totally understand where they're coming from. Because the American cheese they put on it, it already has plenty of salt. So once the burger is perfectly cooked, they go ahead and add two slices of American cheese and put an additional patty right on top. Toast up the buns. Once that's done, the bottom bun gets a little bit of 
ketchup, followed by mustard, those beautiful saute onions, mushrooms, crispy bacon, a good amount of mayo on the top bun, followed by shredded lettuce, pickles, and a slice of tomato. As to finish it up, we go ahead and add those beautiful burger patties with the cheese and top it off with the bun. Now this is the Five Guys All The Way Burger. Now how does it taste? And here we got the 1980s. Hey man, you're old, but your burgers are fire though. So five this guys. is Five Guys. Oh, I've geez. been to Five Guys. I never had this much lettuce on the burger though. Oh, well that's because you ordered the wrong way. You ordered it plain for sure. Uh, cheers everybody. Cheers. cheers. Oh. Hold on. Out of all the decades, we start going up, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, we start going up in flavor. This is the first one with bacon. <laughs> Out of the whole video, the first one, I don't even like bacon like that. What? But on a burger, it's so perfect. Bacon on a burger is just so damn good. But now, let's jump on to the next one, the 1990s. Now, that's a good era right oh. there. Oh, baby, me and Angel. In the 1990s, things were not very healthy. And Pizza Hut <laughs> invented the stuffed <laughs> crust pizza. That was a hit. There was one burger that was also a hit. It was called the Big and Tasty from McDonald's. My brother used to love this. They made that to fight the Whopper from Burger King. And the Big and Tasty had its own sauce. To make it, it was pretty simple. Into a food processor, I threw in one egg yolk, followed by oil, and blend everything on high. Then I added paprika, followed by salt, sugar, garlic powder, mustard, barbecue sauce, and lime juice. Now oh. blend everything on high, and there you have it. I might like this one. I've never actually had the Big Tasty. But the sauce seems pretty nice. The big and tasty sauce. Now it's called big and tasty for a good reason. We got a big burger. So it starts off on the grill. And unlike Five Guys, it gets seasoning. A good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper. Now to assemble, it's pretty simple. We got a good amount of big and tasty sauce followed by Swiss cheese, that monster patty that was just cooked, another slice of cheese, shredded lettuce, diced onions, tomatoes, and that big top bun. Now Damn. this is the big and tasty. I can't believe McDonald's took this one out of the menu. Oh, so they stopped making this. This is why I never tried it then. God, that, why would they get rid of it? I can understand the reason why. And you're about to find out really shortly. Because take a look at this burger. Come on now. I could have that burger any day. Welcome to the 1990s. Ah, you see, in the 90s they did it right. That's a big burger. There's a reason hey. it's called Big and Tasty, everybody. So the Big and Tasty is Big and Tasty. Let's try it and let's rate it. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Bro. Bro, that is so thick. <laughs> it's a big patty. Damn. Completely different than anything we've had. And the cheese is different too. I don't know how I feel about the cheese. Really? I think American cheese would have been better. It's good, but it's so different that I enjoy it. But now, let's jump into the 2000s. Oh, I thought he was gonna explain why they got rid of it. Now I'm a teenager. Now in the 2000s, Wendy's was having a problem. Since their owner passed away, they created the Baconator so that it would blow up with young men. And that's exactly what happened. It saved Wendy's from selling the company. And the burger Damn. costed about four bucks. The Baconator still exists today. And to make it, it's quite simple. First, we need to cook up two square patties. And don't forget, fresh never frozen. Give your buns a nice toast, then add in mayo and ketchup. Both of the patties got American cheese, followed by three slices of bacon each. Now place one see, of- for some reason, I see this, and I'm like, barbecue sauce would go so good, but barbecue sauce is never an option. I mean, I guess you could actually choose to have barbecue sauce if you want. I mean, maybe not actually. Probably just get barbecue sauce on the side and put it on yourself. But for me, I'm I'm slathering barbecue sauce in this and I'm the happiest man alive. On top of the other and lay it down on that bottom bun. Now this is the Baconator. And even today, it makes That's a lot of good. young men really happy. Don't believe wow. me? Well, here we go. The 2000s, the Baconator. The year of no vegetables. Let's go. We just had bacon for the first time on a burger. And now we have too much bacon on a burger. <laughs> you ready to give it a try? It is still going on today. So let's see if the Baconator is actually a good nader or a bad one. Wow, that was so cheesy. That was so cheesy. Yeah. God the good damn, nader bro. or the bad nader? Cheers. 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 Damn. Mm. This tastes almost identical to the Wendy's Baconator. Yeah. Half pound of beef, six slices of bacon. I mean, it's crazy good and by far the unhealthiest burger on this list so far. Yeah, but it's the tastiest one, I'll tell you that. It is still good, but on 2010, things started getting a little weird. This is when social media is at its okay. peak. And every- <laughs> You've got noodle, noodle burgers. I mean, now you can have like lettuce burgers, I think I saw onion burgers to obviously avoid the carbs, which to be fair, if you want to do that, fair enough. I don't blame you because you still get the best part, which is the burger, but or the the burger meat. But uh, and to be fair, ramen burgers might be quite nice. I do love ramen, so who knows? But 
and also with ramen, you're not really avoiding carbs there either. It's just a different, different. <laughs> I don't know, it's just a different thing to the bread. Everybody wanted to have the next burger. That's when this was invented. The ramen burger. Now, if you've never tasted this, you should. As this was very popular in the 2010s. But the original version was like this. First thing, the noodles. You want to get two containers just like this. Lay down some clinch plastic so things would get out easy. Once you have both of them, go ahead and cook some instant noodles and mix them up with some eggs. You should have a texture like this in the end. Now place them on a bowl that we just made, press them down with another container, as now you want to go ahead and cook them until they're fully solid. Because you want to toast those noodles exactly the same way you do with buns. Oh yeah, now you can be as creative as you like going forward. What but the, the original hell? version was like this. You want to go ahead and cook up some quail legs, get them nice and crispy. To assemble, you want to use this looks good. a little bit of teriyaki sauce on the bottom noodle oh. bun, followed by that burger we just cooked, and those fried quail oh, eggs. Finish it off with days. more teriyaki sauce, and of course the top noodle bun. Okay. Now get ready for an Instagram photo and post it online. As this was very popular in the 2010s, the question is, how did it taste? Well, let's find out. And here we got 2010s. Yeah, things got weird. That is not a f burger. Come on, <laughs> man. What is that? That's noodles on a patty. <laughs> okay, can we just try it before it breaks? All right, enough talking. Welcome to the 2010s. This Cheers, is everybody. Wild. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good though. <laughs> pretty good. Okay, hold on. Nobody told me that the noodles were flavored. <laughs> is there like some kind of teriyaki sauce or something on it? 100%. Damn, I hate to say it, but this is actually good. <laughs> it is delicious, everybody. I'm telling you. You made it once. I'm glad you made it again. Mm. But damn, this is the messiest burger in the world, okay? This is a really good burger, but not as good as the burgers we have nowadays, like the burger that changed my life, Google's creation. This is a smash burger, everybody. Well, there we go. This was a fun little video. I enjoyed this a lot, to be fair. We appreciate Google for waiting 100 years to make this video. It's not easy waiting 100 years to learn every burger. The fact that steamed hams actually do exist blows my mind. Yeah, I don't, I've never really heard of that concept in my life and I'm never gonna try it, but fair enough. It's probably healthier, right? Less oil, yeah, I mean, it's gonna be healthy. That's the whole point. I guess maybe if you want to try to be healthy, you do that. Because you avoid all like the fat. I mean, I don't know. It would be healthy because it's just less oil and it's not as greasy, really. Um, fun fact: the Big and Tasty Burger, now known as the Big Tasty, is still available here in Malta. When McDonald's originally op removed it, the Maltese population complained about it so much that the burger was re-added to the menu. Damn, the Maltese people, the Maltese Revolution, the Maltese McDonald's Revolution have done their job. I mean, I don't think it's in the UK still. So I feel like it's been not been here for ages i've not seen it on the mcdonald's menu for a good seven eight years i feel like but um there we go hopefully you enjoyed this reaction and until next time like subscribe and peace